So I thought I'd chat with you guys about what we're currently doing in tissue culture at the moment. So we culture two separate things mostly, embryonic stem cells, so ESLs for short, and also feeder cells. So the way that we grow stem cells in our lab is that we culture ESLs on top of these feeder cells. So you can think of it as a cold culture with feeder cells, which are fibroblast-like cells at the base layer, and then ESL colonies that are growing on top of it. These feeders, they are very robust cell lines and they grow extremely quickly. So before we actually plate the ESLs on top of these feeder cells, we actually irradiate them to stop them from constantly growing and being overconfluent and taking over the ESLs. So this irradiation makes sure that the amount that we plate is the amount that is there. So earlier this week, we have thought out some genetically engineered ESL clones that will be used for microinjection later on in the month. So yesterday, we've just split them into a 1 in 3 ratio, but they grow quite quickly and they might also differentiate and the media turns very orange and yellow very quick, which is why we need to change the media every single day. I'll show you guys some of the cells that I need to change media for and also our feeder cells. So we keep our feeder cells in this big incubator over here. Essentially those huge 15 centimeter plates over there, um, we're just expanding them to be irradiated later on next week. And those are already our irradiated feeder cells to be used for any ESL plating that's ready to be thawed, to be split, or ready for microinjections. Separate incubator, we have our ESL clones. So all of these over here are things that I need to change media for today. I just finished changing media on all of the ESL plates, but now I still have a few little things to do. One of which is print out a bunch of labels to stick on cryovals to freeze down the ESLs that I've been changing media on. Essentially, after we've split them, we will be using some for microinjections. We've also split some into gelatinized plates to extract their DNA to later use for PCR genotyping. So in the meantime, it is very laborious to continuously split so many clones so we'll also be freezing down some of these clones. So because we have so many plates going on, it would take a lot of time to print a bunch of labels. So I'm just doing little bits uh, throughout the weekend. So I've finished printing some of the labels, and here's the stack. So I'll be needing to stick each of these stickers onto one of the cryovals. When I first finished my undergrad and actually also my master's, I did consider pursuing a PhD but I was never really certain. I didn't feel that confident and I didn't know which subject area I'd like to pursue. But right now, after being in this project and having had lots of learning opportunities, 
in terms of uh, lab techniques and also uh, the lab meetings that I've been able to attend to also hear about what other people in the group are doing. I found myself having this grown interest towards cancer immunotherapy, uh, more generally just cancer biology and also the immune response that is more specific to cancers and also the tumor microenvironment. I just find it really fascinating. Right now, at this point in my life, I actually feel excited to be doing a PhD. It's just this weird contrasting feeling where you feel a little uncertain about the choice that you're going to make, but also quite confident about it.